This is a driving review of the all-new Mercedes SL here with Thomas and Autogefühl as the Mercedes AMG SL63, the top model so far with the V8 engine. Here in the front you can see that typical AMG styling with the Panamericana grille, that means here the lower part is wider than the upper part, vertical fins, really aggressive look in the lower part, active cooling, so they will be closed for more wind efficiency when it's not being used, and the digital light is also standard, so a more elaborated high beam function as well. Here, the new Mercedes SL is indeed an AMG build one, that means it's always a Mercedes AMG, and then the different engine version. Why did they do that? Well, you can <laughs> actually put the price higher when it's a pure AMG model. But in the driving part, we'll find out how comfortable is it still and how sporty is it. Interesting thing is that this vehicle basically replaces the Sofa Mercedes SL, the Mercedes AMG GT Roadster and the S-Class Cabriolet because these three basically then form just this one new vehicle they're reducing the convertible lineup so glad we still do have a convertible massive wheels here 19 20 inch standard for the 63 and this one here optional 21 inch and also the optional carbon ceramic brakes This is the car key and 4 meters 70 or 185 inches is the length now. So about 9 centimeters or 3 inches longer. You can see the typical really long front hood. This car is about the proportions. That's why it's still very beautiful, but definitely more aggressive than before. So it really already tells you on the exterior, this is now more a sports car. It is an AMG. It comes with an adaptive suspension as standard. And the 63 model also gets an active suspension that has hydraulic controls to prevent the rolling effect in corners. Really interesting. We'll also test drive that today. And you can see here at the moment the top is down, now a soft top. And it has a very interesting folding mechanism. We can start looking at it in detail and then maybe our Thomas B, the cameraman, moves back. I am doing it here with the key with holding the pressing and holding the close button and okay one more time here we go so now it reacts this is really um, yeah interesting uh, people on the back should watch out definitely with their heads and here we go this Z folding top works to you know like about 50 kilometers an hour or a little bit over 30 miles an hour and here we go about 15 seconds and in the us by the way the windows do not go up by regulatory reasons in europe germany when i keep holding it the windows would also um, go up then that's of course more practical but here in the us that's a safety regulations where you think like yeah maybe someone gets squished by the windows or something and one more time maybe if thomas goes back a little bit more when i open the roof now once again with the key and i will also um yeah sometimes needs more here we go yeah like three three times always but still, opening and closing it with the key will be the best solution because the other solutions are a little bit weird to come up very soon. Here, once again, this like, you know, Transformers alike, isn't it? And this is definitely a spectacular function here with the retractable wing. Of course, I can do it here statically now when the car is right there. Just, you know, showing off to my friends or something. <laughs> but then when it's lower down you can see here a seamless rear really round also tells us something like porsche 911 cabriolet something of the design what do you think really horizontally drawn tail mc with a very cool structure individual dots on the inside that's really lovely and then here the amg badge and the sl63 badge on the other side here in the lower part let's take a look Autogefühl, fake exhaust police, alert. Yes, you can hear them also in the back. <laughs> and you can see, well, from the outside it looks cool, but on the inside you can find the real exhaust then. Mm, is that really necessary? I don't know. What do you think about the design here of the all-new SL generation? By the way, one explanation why they also went into that sporty direction again, that the original 300 SL was derived from a racing vehicle. So that's heritage-wise, 
a good explanation. Yes, you always want to see turning indicators. Here we are with the front and also in an interesting fashion here, replacing the back LED strip in the rear. The new SL also comes with rear axle steering as standard. You can see it right here when I'm turning the front wheels. The rear wheels turn in the opposite direction, maximum 2.5 degrees. And the cool thing is here, kind of, yeah, industry leading, the threshold where it changes to parallel steering is now here at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour. That's extremely high. So it means that this plus of agility remains up to a reasonable speed. Under the hood, we have a 4-liter V8 bi-turbo engine in the 63 model with 585 horsepower. The acceleration figure is 3.6 seconds. In the 53 model, the sister model, it will be 3.9 seconds. So there's not a big difference between the 53 and the 63 model. News here for the SL is first time all-wheel drive and kind of always all-wheel drive. So the 63 and the 53 model both all-wheel drive with a strong rear-wheel bias. What else do we expect? Based on this one, here also a V8 plug-in hybrid. And we can also expect a four-cylinder, probably also as a plug-in hybrid. But seems like at the moment no six-cylinder. Of course, when you look at this video here at a later stage, the details might be out at the time we're recording. This is what you get so far, all-wheel drive and the V8. Later on, then also more information. This all-new cockpit here with the AMG steering wheel, two spokes, but capacitive BS buttons here. That's a bit of a letdown. Then you can see here digital instruments in 12.3 inch. And you have these analog elements with the turbine vents. They're also illuminated, so pretty cool, definitely. And all new as well this screen here 11.9 inch and you can change the angle i will soon show you that how it works second solution to open or close the roof is here click once and then click and hold twice and then you can see what's happening in real life here in this animation as well so the roof is closing indeed i have to hold this um, lower button this is actually then still the easy way to do that from the inside. But the most ridiculous way I really have to say is to do it in the screen that you can really, and I can show you to open it again, you slide and hold it then here. And yeah, I did make the, uh, the joke before that you basically, yeah, maybe like glue your uh, finger to the screen meanwhile, or put like a tape over it. Um, yeah, to me, this solution is really ridiculous. So, yeah, but that's always about saving buttons, saving buttons. There is one button than before, so I would just ignore that this slide and hold function in the screen is available and use the key or use the button in the lower part and then just forget about this. The animation is nice though, and it gets more unique with that screen. <laughs> screen, screen, screens. Here, when you press here, then you can change the display angle. This is like, you know, most land back and then here, it comes towards you and this is done that when there's sun from behind or from the top part you can still see what's going on in the display then yeah um, it's an interesting idea because it's the open space here and then you can still see what's going on in general about the infotainment system here when you click it there then you go to the gps screen here at huntington beach at the moment beautiful area and also Newport Beach beautiful area you can see the map is quite responsive also nice visualization here from the water and so on then the main menu is right here like this for example you can also access the cable couple here or it's also a hot key or hot field in the top part nice integration of the Apple CarPlay like this and for example also comfort features you can see you can activate the seat kinetics and it's moving always a little bit that you actually don't get um, you know so much fatigue thing is here for the temperature control it's always staying in the lower part here that's good but still no real knob you have to do it in the screen or use the voice command system either say hey mercedes that's the one thing or you can also press on the steering wheel set the temperature to 73 degrees I'm setting the temperature to 73 degrees. Thank you. By the way, when you have a root set, there's also this augmented reality function that you have the projections in the camera image. That's actually well done. Steering wheel, 
great size, sporty form, really great grip also with the microfiber sides. And then here the capacitive buttons for the cruise control, for example. Again, this is not easy to control that while driving. Also for controlling the instruments, you sometimes just are mistaken in what you are doing. So the user interface, not that good in this case. What's good is that, well, you can change the sound here, for example, oh, boom, 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 <laughs> on the left side. And the cool thing here for the drive mode selector, we know it from Porsche, this is really easy solution to go to, for example, Sports Plus mode here directly at the steering wheel. This is good user interface, but it's also something you can actually turn yourself and have a haptic feedback, unlike the other things. However, then again, here the shifting pedals, they are actually quite fancy again for this MCT multi-clutch transmission. In the digital instruments, you can also have the map full screen, as you saw, but you can pick here, for example, a super sport gauge. It's yeah, a little bit overloaded as for the information you get, I think. Um, and you also have to control it with the capacitive buttons on the steering wheel. So again, here, especially the instruments interface is not that easy to control. Head-up display is actually quite cool. Here you can see also that you have nice GPS commands. There are two kind of seats available, the base seats, and these here are the optional performance seats. And they are also available with Dynamica microfiber on the inside. As for the comfort, I'm not so sure. I tested both seats and um, they're both not that comfortable, not that, you know, long-term comfort proof. Here the performance seats are a little bit slimmer. They cage you in a little bit more. You really have to try it yourself, which ones are more suitable. But it becomes clear from the seating position, especially here now in the 63 model. This is more an AMG GT successor than a Mercedes SL successor at least from the seating position. How will it be with driving? We will soon find out. Here with 1 means 86 or 6 with 1. You can see I have plenty of headroom like... <laughs> yeah, okay. We close the convertible roof once more that you can also see that. And now let's close the convertible roof once more. So yeah, we're opening and closing it all day, all night <laughs> to see about the headroom. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. Here we go. You see once again this Z folding mechanism. Here we go. And now, once again, here, 1 meter A6, 6 with 1. Let's see. Yeah, there's still some space left, no problem. Inside of the doors, by the way, for the seat heating, and see here, this is one button. Why is it one button? Yeah, but at least on this one button, you also can activate here the air scarf for a hot blow in your neck. Ah, and there it goes. So. Mmm, that's nice. <laughs> it comes with a standard wind deflector here, a classic one, manual, and this has a massive effect. I do prefer that. In the 911, they also have a solution where this big wind deflector can also be kind of drawn out. That's also, of course, nice. Didn't think about that right here. Now you have the rear bench. It goes for a 2 plus 2 seater, but nothing for adults, May for children. It has the isofix, so you can install child seats or you can put a bag on the seats, but that's it. I don't even have to test it to sit there. It, <laughs> it won't work, trust me. Now that the hardtop is gone, what about the trunk? Well, soft top gives you more space usually, but still it's not abundance of space. A meter or 40 inches, the total width, but then very shallow right here. The height is about 50 centimeters maximum. That's about 20 inches. Here, the smaller cabin trolley does fit in and the backpack, that works. However, if I want to put a little bit bigger, see, that does not work. Hmm. So overall, not the best result as for trunk here. It goes a little bit further in there here, by the way, like this. Um, yeah, and you can also store the the wind effect right there if you want, but still it works somewhat for a weekend trip, but I think not more. At least you now have also the rear bench. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, that was Sport Plus mode and although we have all-wheel drive, we clearly saw that this one here has a strong wheel wheel bias, definitely. He has a great acceleration here also on the sound. Wow. Really strong from that V8. Has a lot of power. And 
when you put it to the comfort mode, then the sound is also drawn back. All is easy and relaxed. Here now driving 55 miles now on the highway number one. Of course, we don't have the best weather, but still we have a nice view to the beach. And here at now, yeah, 55 now, 50 miles an hour, there is already significant wind noise here at the rear, although we have the wind deflector up. So that's the thing. Um, it's not too cold on the inside here. It's at the moment outside 55 degrees Fahrenheit. My hairs are moving a little bit, so it's not that too much wind would be coming inside the cabin, cabin here. However, yeah, there is. There's a lot of wind noise picking up from the rear, so that's actually unusual. So I would expect that they only come at the later stage, but from the wind effect that is coming to the inside, not feeling too much, that's actually quite okay. So, wow. Yeah, that's a <laughs> very dynamic start to the whole thing. It shows it can still be driven really rear wheel biased, although it is all wheel drive now, still you get the power better to the ground and when you're on the sport dust mode you see it's still like you know very aggressive vehicle and indeed that is not so much Mercedes SL that is more AMG GT and if I really compare these you know predecessor Mercedes SL and also the most recent AMG GT Roadster this one feels so much more like the AMG GT Roadster so definitely true AMG jeans Suspension-wise, it's not uncomfortable actually, it's doing a good job. It's the um, adaptive suspension right here. And this actually also when we have some uh, bumps in the road and so on, it's no problem at all. However, the seating position itself, definitely sports car alike. All right, we close the roof and 40 to 70 miles. Plop, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that went quick and of course in this case it's a safety thing to have so much horsepower to get on the on the on the highway in the proper way, right? And in the safe way, definitely. <laughs> so and of course we can use the comfort feature here once again to make the suspension more comfortable. However, especially with the biggest wheels, yeah you know some bumps in the road they are being transported through the back definitely soon more open top riding even more fun winding roadway here i also want to show with close top it has this three layer top and it's not the most silent car overall but it doesn't make a difference if you would have the soft top or the hard top because the soft top is really very well insulated so the noise you hear is more, you know, through the windows and not through the top. On the top, through the soft top, it's hardly anything you hear. It's a very cozy feeling. Woo. That was 0 to 40 miles an hour with a lot of fireworks from an exhaust. You know, when the road's a little bit wet, better stay in an only sport mode, not sport plus necessary. And then you can also, when I want to hear more from the exhaust, also activate that exhaust note once again. And then you also have the <laughs> sound music. And yeah, also this is like a US spec vehicle. So this will be definitely louder than the EU spec vehicle. Here now some countryside roads, 45 miles an hour. And the thing is here, the rear axis steering, that is something so remarkable. and makes the car so agile it feels you know with rear axis steering they tend to feel a little bit less natural however the steering is very natural and for a rear axis steering it still feels quite natural i really have to say by the way when you're driving convertible and it starts to rain it's not a problem as long as you're driving fast enough <laughs> to push the rain in front of you um, but really here the car tells you i mean this is a windy road now and even wants me to be more windy, you know? Always saying like, wow, it's so much fun, really great. That suspension here also with the hydraulic controls in the 63, the car always keeps it upright. It does not lean at all. So really astonishing the driving dynamics they have achieved here. Once again, it could go in slalom all the time, all the way. And the suspension is also not that uncomfortable. 
wheels it would be more wise to go for smaller wheel size then you have a little bit more comfort actually here 21 inch wheels are of course the least comfortable this is something where you can you know control something definitely yeah and that v8 engine is always right there when you need it as for the fuel economy we yeah, have some 18 mpg us 22 mpg uk which would be some 13 liters on 100 kilometers course quite high in the consumption figure then so not that good but that's kind of what we did expect it is such a fun sporty vehicle however as I said earlier from the looks from the interior seating position from the driving feeling it is more a successor of a Mercedes AMG GT Roadster or GTC but it's not a Mercedes SL this is not a Mercedes SL. Really have to say that. There have always been AMG versions, yes, but the core Mercedes SL does offer you some sporty fun, yes. But it is the comfortable, elegant cruiser. This one still has elegance on the outside, although it's more aggressive. But driving-wise, it doesn't have this elegance that the SL actually had. So, yeah, in this case a little bit disappointing, however, if you want that sporty attitude and if it's more towards the Porsche 911, yeah, that's correct, you know, it's more Porsche 911 competitor now, but so far the SL was more like standing for its own, you know what I mean? So that's the thing. What a great, fun, agile sports vehicle now, but no SL. What the real SL is, in my opinion. You can see in the Mercedes SL Generations episode. And if you're more interested in the difference between yeah, the new SL 53 and 63, we also have a studio episode of that where we explain exactly this. See you there.